All right, welcome everybody to what is hopefully going to be a surprise treat. This is Age of Empires 2, but it's for the Nintendo DS. For those who don't remember, AoE 2 actually did have a DS port that's actually a turn-based game, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot back in the day. Uh, it's been you know a good long while since I played it, but uh, before we get into all of the custom scenarios and whatnot with uh, Victors and Vanquished, I thought this would just be a fun little thing to do. Uh, I don't think this should take too long, but yeah, I'll uh, get into this. Hopefully I set up everything so it works properly. So basically, there are only five civs. They each have a campaign, and uh, we're going to go through them all here. So, this is going to be starting with Joan of Arc. Joan must travel to Chinon and convince the Dauphin that she was sent by God to lead them to victory. In the year 1412, England and France were locked in a decades-long bitter war. The war was over the lands in France, and the English held the clear upper hand because of stunning victories at the battles of Crissé, Poitiers, and Agincourt. But in that fortuitous year, a savior for France was born in the most unlikely of places, the peasant village of Domremy. Uh, the bay was called Jean, or Joan, and her future lay a, in her future lay a destiny of battle and fire. Joan grew to adolescence under the constant threat of attack by the English and their allies, the Burgundians. Her child eyes watched as the hopes and future of France uh, dim year by year. But Joan was not an ordinary girl. As she grew, she began hearing voices. The voices identified themselves as St. Catherine, St. Margaret, and the Archangel Michael, and they asked her to lead the army to save France. Uh, Joan went to nearby Vaucouleurs and petitioned its lord Robert to send her to the Prince Charles VII, the Dauphin, in Chinon. Robert laughed at Joan, a silly teenage girl with wild things in her head. But Joan would not be deterred. After some months, Robert agreed to send her to Chinon with an escort, if for no other reason than to be rid of her. She would uh, go on her way, and he could forget about her. All right. So, um, I, I, I should remember how to play this, but this is basically the tutorial campaign. So, I'll uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, I will lead you through it. Also, hopefully the, the screens are large enough for you guys. There's only uh, so much I can do with uh, using an old DS screen and trying to cut that for a modern PC. So, Joan, I am Sir Jean de Metz, and I will protect you with my life. The Dauphin awaits our arrival at Chinon Castle to the south. We should make our way out of the forest and onto the road to speed our travel. Explain moving. Uh, I, I think I remember. Yeah, so it's basically a uh, turn-based move. You ride well for a peasant. Unit is now gray, indicating it cannot be used anymore for this day. You'll need to end your day uh, to rest your unit before they can act again by choosing end day. End day is one of the options found in the Empire menu. Uh, select end day from the Empire menu. Uh, this one. So yeah, it's turn-based. A well-deserved rest, and we are lucky to suffer no attacks. Our journey will be made easier than it feared. If we stick to the road, we'll be in Chinon in three days' time. Still, I should tell you about the various terrain we'll be traveling through. Uh, sure. Uh, the terrain info displays all the information about that terrain type. There's a move cost, sight cost, defense bonus, range bonus, sight bonus, buildings allowed, and specials. Road, road spaces retain the qualities of the base terrain, but only cost one move point. You can toggle between terrain and unit info uh, by using the info screen toggle. Understanding terrain advantages and disadvantages is a great asset in battle. Let us continue. Okay. Oh, no. How do I? Okay. I just have to click and drag. I am using an emulator for this. Uh, I own the real game. Don't you worry. Just, uh, I don't really have a capture card for a DS anymore. Alright, select end day. Uh-oh, it's a militia! A band of English militia crept out of the woods while we rested. They're blocking the path to Shinon, but don't worry. I can tell from their unit info that they are no match for me and my men. Let me explain unit info to you. Um, I think I remember it. I'll show it to you guys. It was my aim to keep you far from danger, but it seems like we have no choice. I suggest we attack the fiend. Uh, sure. 
yeah, we have to be adjacent to them. We have to attack them. Uh, confirm that you wish to attack. The unit is damaged. You'll see a health bar above it on the map. It's achieved for far too long. Hey. So, yeah, as I recall... So basically, it's it's not random, right? You just have your attack points against their defense points. And it's like the attacker attacks first, and then there's a counterattack, and your percentage, like the lower your HP, the weaker your attack is. So I think you need a two to one advantage at max HP to kill stuff in one hit. <laughs> we have the heart of a warrior. The Nofa will be shocked to hear of your heroics in battle. Still, it'd be wise not to risk yourself in battle too often. Your mission will fail if you fall. By defeating the militia, you've achieved a bonus goal. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have to... We're, we're going to do all the bonus objectives. Uh, Yeah, don't worry. Make it to Shinon Castle. All right. Okay. So I think yep. we just have to do that and we win. Shinon Castle. We've made it to Shinon Joan. I will inform the Dauphin of our arrival at once. He'll be so delighted that our travels went so well. Indeed, I've heard much of this girl and her prophesied destiny. But she must be tested before I place my trust in a child. Yeah, buddy. Look at us taking down the English. Uh, when Joan arrived in Chinon, tales of her wild story preceded her. The Dauphin tried to fool her by hiding in a crowd, but Joan picked him out easily. The court attendees were stunned and began to wonder. Prophecy had foretold of a savior for France, and they were certainly in need of one. But a peasant girl? Heedless of the doubters, Joan pressed her case on to the Dauphin. She even revealed to him a sign of her inspiration, which swayed him to her cause. He began to believe in this most unusual girl. Alright, so we must uh, command warriors and retrieve a divine sword. The Dauphin was starting to believe in Joan, a most unlikely ally. He offered her training in the art of warfare. Though she said her training came from high above, Joan was not too proud or foolish to accept some terrestrial instruction. She must learn about war before she could wage war. Joan was also presented with arms and armor. The armor she accepted, the sword she refused. There was another sword waiting for her, she said, beneath uh, the Church of St. Catherine. Uh, Joan, the Dauphin has entrusted me with your military training. Uh, sure. These armored soldiers are your most basic attack unit. They have a bonus to attack buildings and siege machines, uh, but on foot they cannot travel very far before tiring, hence their low move points. Uh, we ride on a horse, but our personal guard are all on foot, which means we are considered an infantry unit and have the same bonuses as one. These soldiers are members of the Dauphin's Guard. They obey your command. They're both infantry units, but the pikemen have a special ability. Their long pole arms act as anti-cavalry to stop horses in their tracks by giving them a strength bonus and a first strike ability versus all cavalry. Spotted an English scout team to the west with a very excited Corgi. Uh, attacked the light cavalry with our pikemen and the men at arms with our long swords. We have to decide for ourselves. They wait our orders. What are our uh, bonus objectives? So defeat all enemy units. Retrieve Joan's sword from the church. No friendly units lost. Okay. Make Jean de Metz proud by doing well in training. Okay. And we have to find Joan's sword by the end of day 10. Yeah, so we get extra stats for because we're facing cavalry, and they, I think, also get some because we're technically an infantry, but I think we, you know, should do well here. Um... I feel like this actually kills the dude, whereas I think you need a 2 to 1 advantage to... Oh, I think there's a way we can skip these. Uh, options. Uh, 
All right, do I, I don't know if I want to turn them off completely. I just want to, there was definitely a way I could just kind of skip past them. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Hotkey configurations. Uh, that's not right. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. Uh, end day. Let's go. Ugh, ugh, ugh. So I think we attack. For, yeah, we're in the forest, so we get a twenty percent damage or defense boost. No. Uh, attack. No. <laughs> I don't think we win this, but I think we mostly... Oh, nope, we do win it. Nope, we don't. <laughs> we only mostly win it. Poke. So, I mean, you can see it's like basically, you know, the same units and stuff as AoE 2. It's just in a turn-based game. The enemy is defeated. Cavalry, sure. Cavalry are powerful mounted units that can sweep and decimate entire armies. They have a large move rating. And a bonus to attack infantry and ranged units. But they prove ineffective against buildings. Okay. We have our knights. Uh, Spatch an uh, English spy spy in the eastern swamps. Swamplands are treacherous and impassable to cavalry. Wait until the enemy has left the swamp and then attack them on the plains. Uh, oh yeah, that's something cavalry has. You get an extra attack when you... Uh, attack from on the, the, the open plains with your horsies. And yeah, castles give you a big defense Seven. bonus. Yeah, you get 40% uh, defense bonus when you're on a castle. Seven. Anyway, I think we should be getting a bunch of extra attack. Yeah. Forward! Charge! Oh, we still don't one-shot them. I hope it doesn't run back into the swamp. No, they're just going to attack me like doofuses. Yay! Uh, sure, we can explain range units. Range units often have lower attack and defense values than infantry or cavalry, and they barely scratch buildings. Their advantage in battle is their extended attack range. And fire upon distant foes uh, and avoid counterattacks from non-ranged units. Are the best ranged soldiers in Shinon. Use them to defeat the enemy by the lake. Remember that high terrain like mountains will boost your attack range, but forests and swamps will reduce your attack range. Okay, as I remember it... Seven. Oh. Yeah, skirmishers are kind of weird. It's not like they're anti-archers, but they always get the first attack. Seven. Also, they have less... I, I don't remember skirmishers being very good. Maybe I'm not remembering well. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Also, crossbowmen can't move and attack on the same turn. I, turn. I definitely remember that, but archers can. Seven. Anyway, this should be uh, easy peasy. Get the extra range from the mountains. I definitely remember you want to be using the terrain a lot. Splendid, Joan. You're a natural. You bet I am. The boldness of our enemy disgusts me. The English have invaded our countryside and built a mill to supply their invading armies. Your final duty here shall be to destroy their mill and crush the villagers so they may build no more. Using siege units. Sure. Siege units are complex machines of tremendous power, requiring advanced technology to build. They are usually tailor-made with a single devastating task in mind. Men flee in terror and castle raise white flags when they hear the creaking wheels of siege machines. Yeah, battering rams can only attack buildings and scorpions uh, can only attack units. And yeah, scorpions also like crossbowmen, you can't move an attack on the same day. You cannot travel over mountains and swamps unless there is a road. Uh, yeah. Yeah, super high stats for these guys. Scorpions, I remember being very good. They're not, like, cheap weak ones. Yeah, we can't move an attack the same day.
Yeah, now I think we can just go kill these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> Boo -doo! And yeah, 600 attack versus that building. Knock, knock, knock. You've still much to learn, but I'm satisfied with your training. The Dauphin is pleased. Uh... Yeah. Okay, so now we have to put it all together. So they have a ram, a long swordsman, a knight, and an archer. Okay, let's go attack the archer with... Good night. Get that planes boost. Anyway, that should be one sided. Yeah, archers don't really have high base attack, but at least we're not going to take any damage. And taking damage does matter as you become less powerful, the lower HP you have. Uh, yeah, so Joan basically has long swordsman attack, but way more defense. Did we get him? No. Guess we'll be done for the day. Let's go. Oh, one HP. Let's go. What wickedness! The battering ram is headed for the church. Um, no, wait. Yeah, that didn't really do much, did it? Go get him. Poke. I wonder if that even gets the job done. Oh, come on. Anyway, they should kill me if they try and attack me. Get the planes bonus. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, he killed the guy, except he died. Almost. Hopefully this finishes it off. Yeah. Cut down the enemy. No longer will invaders despoil our lands here. Now to find your sword. Oh, we actually have to go get the sword. Oh, there's the Church of St. Catherine. Oh, I didn't mean the pikemen to go there, but whatever. Wait, how did I not make the bets proud? What the heck? What did I do wrong? 
Oh no, this will not stand. Uh, adding a mysterious sword only added to Joan's fast-growing legend. To accomplish uh, complement her war gear, she commissioned a special banner to be made. It decorated with the fleur-de-lis. It would travel everywhere with her. Enemies would come to fear it, and allies would come to love it. Joan had already won the confidence of the Dauphin, but she still had doubters. To some, she had done little but travel through some backwoods and find an old blade. How could she possibly save France? Okay, hold on. We are not... I, I am going to skip through this, guys, and when I'm back... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see what I did differently. I'm going to do exactly what they tell me to do. Okay, I got something that said you used your units well, but I don't think I got last time because I just attacked the units in a slightly different order. Oh, okay, there we go. I just had to attack the, uh, the men-at-arms with the long swordsman. I think we're good. All right. Much better. Finding a mysterious sword only added Joan's fast-growing legend to complement her war gear. Oh, wait, we already read that. All right, now, from peasant to general, we're just blitzing through this tutorial. Joan's urgent voices told her that she must lift the English siege of Orléans. The Dauphin, while eager for it to be done, was still a bit hesitant. First, he decided to give Joan a command of a small force and send her to investigate reports of English raiders nearby. Joan hesitated, worried that any time could mean the fall of Orléans, but she relented. If she must take one uh, more small step before a great leap, so be it. The English general, Lord Talbot, is building a town to the north. We should capture the town for ourselves before his full forces come to secure it. I will guard this bridge until we are ready to cross onto the battlefield. First, you need to raise an army capable of defeating an English veteran general. First step is uh, building a new town center. Uh, I, know, I know how to do that stuff. Okay. We'll do exactly what they want me to do this time. Not ready to cross the bridge yet. Don't worry. Uh, okay, what are our secondary goals? Route Earl Talbot, destroy the enemy town center before the reinforcements arrive, and claim all resources on the map. Alright. Don't think there's anything else we can do, because, yeah. Jean de Metz, we literally can't move. Yeah. You don't always see everything that's on the map, you just do that in some scenarios, I remember. Good old Earl Talbot. Men, it was a hard battle to win this post, but we can rest until aid arrives. Then we march on Chinon and where the Dauphin hides in their cowardice. Yeah. Earning income. I remember how to boom. There's the wheat and the gold. Yeah, so what you do, guys, is basically you just send a villager. And you can build a mill. I remember how to do that. I, I'll teach the viewer at home, Jean. Um, also, I think we can... Yeah, we can research. So basically, what it, how it works is you can research one technology a day. And that's based on what building you have. So like Loom, your villagers get extra defense. Town scouts, your T, uh, TCs get an extra line of sight. Leather souls, your villagers get one more movement speed. And uh, yeah, you need a barracks for weaponsmiths. That gives your militia extra attack. So, extra movement speed sounds good. Um, but yeah, so basically you build mills on the, the wheat nodes, mines on the gold nodes, and those are your only two resources in the game because, uh, you know, it's a DS game. Uh, dispatch the force to meet us. We should make haste. I had already was researching. See, I remember this stuff. Anyway, let's go towards that gold, because we don't really have any gold income right now. Get a mill. Let's get another villager. Uh, let's get loom. I don't think there's anything else for us to do. This is like the, uh, you know, the random map stuff. We're nearly ready to age up. Aging up. Um, yeah. 
option. Yeah, we can't research on the day we age up. And you also get a bunch of automatic upgrades. Uh, there's like a certain number of techs you need to... Yeah, okay, so we need three techs to age up from Dark Age to Feudal Age. Anyway, let's build the barracks. So you can build farms around mills, but mining camps are just mining camps, if I recall correctly. I mean, this isn't going to do anything, but we just kind of need to move down the tech tree. Yeah, now we can age up. Um, booming. Add more eco. Yeah, one mine generates 150 gold, whereas the mill generates 55 food, and I think all the farms do as well. I think it's... Yeah, it's all 50... Oh, that's right. Um, Some of the civilizations get, like, a farming bonus, and some get a gold bonus, and Franks, I'm pretty sure, get a farming bonus. So I think it's normally 50, but Franks get 10% more. Anyway, let's make a militia. Okay, uh, what's the Empire Review? Oh yeah, that just gives you an update on everything. Yeah, income, pop limit, number of villagers and military units. Okay, yeah. Then we attack Beaugency. Uh The French are raising an army to march upon us, but do not fear. They are weak and our forces arrive soon. Let's drive the Franks back into the woods. All right. Go get them, Joan. Oh, yeah, they're hero powers, but I don't think we can use them yet. Um, we are Franks, so uh, I guess we should go for a stable. Let's go in the direction of more resources. Don't think there's anything we can do. Yeah, this is how much, how many resources we get with the, at the start of each turn. I remember this stuff. I thought I'd forgotten most of it. Let's go in the swamp. Oh yeah, and I, uh, I looked while I was getting the uh, other achievement or whatever it's called, bonus goal, and uh, I found the button to skip the attacks. But sometimes, you know, if you just want to see it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Um, we need more gold. We only have... Okay, there's a gold mine. There's one that's all the way over there, but that's going to take a while to get to. Oh, yeah, that's right. Scout Cav and Light Cav are different. Light Cav become knights. Scout Cav are just Scout Cav through the entire game. But Scout Cavs have a really high movement. Yeah, Scout Cav have two more movement. And I forget what the ability Scout does. I should look this stuff up. Anyway, uh, let's make a Light Cav. And are they... What are they making? They're just making Militia. Farms. And I think we're good. Hey. Yeah. 
Go get him! Uh, I think you just build a town center. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You just need to destroy the town center, and then if you build a town center on the ruins of the previous town center, you get all the other buildings. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, the stupid hills in the way. Yeah, hills, three movement tile cost, whereas plains are two, mountains I think are four, forests are three, swamps I think might be three, yeah. Oh yeah, let's try and research. Increase TC defense and line of sight. Wheelbarrow reduces the cost of buildings. Advanced mining gives you more gold income. Horse color gives you more food income. You have the blacksmith upgrades that do blacksmith upgrade-y things. Tracking, get extra line of sight. Cartography, you get more line of sight. Trading improves the trade rate and coinage gives you more gold income. Oh yeah, I remember the market being really good. All right, let's get advanced mining. Can I afford another farm? Darn it. Oh, I can't even train any more units. The reinforced Trondi. I'm working on it, Jean. Go get Lord Talbot. Earl Talbot. Oh, well, we routed him. Yeah, I remember. So when you're training a unit, it, like, as soon as you, like, click train, um, you get 50 H, or 50% HP. So, yeah, it's just like sniping the units while they're being trained is like this version of uh, camping production. Wait, we need 10... Wait, hold on, hold on. If I recall correctly, even with... No. No. Okay. I think even without a market, you can... Yeah, you can trade at the town center. Okay. I think the market just improves the trading rate. Anyway, there we go. Need to get all the resources on the map. Yeah, Cab is really bad against buildings. No, wait. I wanted to do that. It's a process, guys, figuring out these uh, controls. Okay, we need to go in the direction of that gold mine, though. I don't know when the uh, English reinforcements arrive. Don't remember that at all. Pretty sure I always won before they arrived when I was a kid. Let's go. Oh, they had a number on me. Nope. All right, now let's go after the town center. Because we do need to capture that. We need to capture you. There was like a wheat. Yeah, there's a wheat down over here. Anyway, it looks like we're basically overrunning them anyway. Build a blacksmith. Okay, I think we did everything. Uh, 
yeah, let's take down that scout. Okay, do that. Got you. I mean, we're not really that much closer to taking down the town, though. Oh, yeah, and that bill needs to go in the other direction. I hope we have time for all this before the, uh, the reinforcements arrive. Forging is more expensive. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, twenty five percent attack. Men-at-arms. Oh yeah, there's the whole veteran system. You can see like the two little uh, banners over here. I think every three battles or something like that, you get a stat boost. Other RTS games do that. I forget what the percentage is. Okay, we got you. Okay, we need to send you this way. Hold on, you gotta go this way. You gotta get all those resource nodes. Even the Corgi is excited. Gold definitely seems harder to come by than food. Maybe that's just because we're Franks. Also, researching is really gold-intensive. Oh, come on. Nope. Nope. Yeah, attack the the vill with the the men at arm, which has less attack than Joan. So we do most the most amount of damage to the town center. There you go. That's using our noggin. There's a button to cycle through all of your uh, available units. I don't remember what it is, though. It might have been like L or R or something. Like all the ones that you just haven't used yet. Got the town center, and before the, re the reinforcements arrived.
It shows the available tiles you can go. Like, I can't even reach the gold mine next turn. Alright, I mean... Basically just need to go get those extra resources. No. Okay, got yet. Gotta get these extra achievements, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can capture farms in the same way you can capture buildings. Okay, got that mine there. We need to get the mine over here, and then I think we're basically good. We built on every resource in the area. The Britons will be left starving. Okay, we got all our bonus objectives, and so now I can go get the town. Easy. The town is ours! Uh, Jones Rado Talbot's camp was impressive and unexpected. She used the momentum to press Dauphin, uh, the Dauphin. She must be set to Orleans, and she would. All right, guys, uh, I think that's going to be it for the first part of this little uh, series. We have five campaigns to go through. Got Japanese, Mongols, Saracens, and Britons. So, yeah, hope this is something you guys will be interested in. And uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.